I'm Javier Vega. Yeah, we are from Practice Fusion. And tonight what we want to do is um, tell you a little bit about what we've been using, how we've been using Ember uh, along with another technology, uh, which we're going to tell you a lot about tonight, uh, to really make our Ember app shine. And uh, I think uh, hopefully uh, we'll have some time for questions afterwards as well, but we've got some exciting things for you to see. Javier's a, a UI engineer. I'm uh, more of a full stack guy myself, but uh, we work together on the same team. And uh, the things we're going to be telling you about are things we've built in our electronic healthcare record uh, application, which we've built over at uh, Practice Fusion to help doctors uh, run their practices and also give uh, uh, world-class care to their patients. So in a lot of ways, feel like we're doing some, doing some good while we're doing good things. Uh, so it's good. So I'm going to let Javier uh, go first here, and I'll be back in a minute. All right, cool. So this presentation is going to start with a little bit of introduction about the real-time web. Then Tom is going to give you a real uh, de deep dive on XMPP, and we're going to wrap it up with a demo of a nice instant message application that works with XMPP and it was built on Ember.js. All right, so first of all, how many people here have heard of XMPP before? Raise your hand. Oh, wow, that's, that's quite a bit. You know, that's, that's great. So then this, this is definitely going to be interesting for you guys. OK. Oop. Actually, one sec. So the real-time web is basically the concept of building an application that can distribute data in the browser um, with very low latency. So think in terms of an application like an instant messenger or any type of collaborative type of board, a document that needs to be edited and shared among a group of users. Or think of a, like a multiplayer game, you know, any type of application in which clients are producing a, a lot of information and this needs to get distributed very fast and very quickly to other clients. So building these type of applications in, in the web is actually hard because HTTP wasn't really built you know, originally to support this low latency. HTTP is a protocol that every time that you want to get the latest data, you have to you know, fetch this data from the server. So if you're, right, if you're building a client that needs to be querying the server every second to get the latest data, that's, that's not really the most optimal way to do this, right? Um, but however, people have been building these type of applications on the web. We see them in multiple places. Um, earlier, because people were using you know, different type of technologies, like uh, never ending loading iframe or Swift or different type of polling techniques, Bosch or long polling. Uh, and, and lately, we're, we're being introduced to the technology of uh, web sockets that we can use in our applications. But though, even if you can solve the problem of pushing data from your server to your clients, when you're building a real-time application that has a lot of users, you're still left out with the, with the complexity of a scaling. You know? Think in terms of any type of application in which your clients are talking to other group of clients, that can be hundreds of users talking to other users, thousands of them. Or what about hundreds of thousands? You know, generating data and setting, setting packages back and forth. That problem, you know, it's not really a browser problem. That's more like an infrastructure problem. So that's when XMPP come really to, to give you an alternative and op an opportunity to solve this problem. Because XMPP is a technology that was originally built around 1999 to be a replacement for instant messaging, like an open, open source alternative for it. And ever since then has really evolved to become a much more mature system that can scale and support this type of, this type of application. So let's have Tom now give you a little bit more of that information about XMPP and what it can do. Yeah, you see the picture of the uh, most interesting protocol in the world up there? <laughs> He's got his uh, little dose XMPP bottle <laughs> ready to go. Yeah, we want to tell you a little bit about uh, how we use this technology uh, in our application. But let me tell you a little bit about the technology first. I think that's a good place to start. Again, some of you are familiar with it. It's formerly known as Jabber. It was originally, as Javier pointed out, intended to really uh, be an open replacement to some of the proprietary protocols that were being used in uh, the various chat ads, uh, apps, uh, AOL, and what have you. Uh, and so the uh, XMPP uh, was sort of born out of that. The Standards Foundation is uh, now that um, uh, sort of governing body around XMPP. And, and as you can see there, I've got links. So we'll, you'll be able to have access to some of these things to the uh, RFCs, the standards that are uh, r defining the core of XS XMPP. We need to say that about 300 times tonight, so we get used to it. 
So starting with some of the core concepts of XMPP, first of all, understanding that XMPP is a stream-based protocol. Each of the parties that are involved in the communication uh, initiate a stream for sending and a stream for receiving XML. Uh, the XML is uh, primarily a carrier uh, for whatever the content needs to be. Uh, the, the payload within XMPP packaged up as stanzas of various kinds uh, typically is XML, but can be JSON and other types of encoding as well in those payloads. One of the uh, difficulties you have if you were to build this type of application from the ground up is dealing with all of the uh, integration types of issues that come with that type of a solution. So authentication and authorization, all built in part of the uh, standard itself. Uh, it's a SASL based authentication model. Uh, the authorization is built into the structure that is maintained in the form of rosters and users and groups. The messages themselves uh, in the form of three different types of stanzas you see there, uh, presence, uh, messages themselves, and IQs which are uh, information queries or more of a metadata type of a message uh, to kind of help maintain and, and uh, carry on the conversation. Uh, the thing that's very interesting about this sort of triad of messaging is that each has its uh, defined purpose. And when you start thinking about how would you like to really liven up that Ember app that you're writing, bring it to real time. Imagine the charts that uh, Alex had in the last presentation, updating in real time as the data is flowing through to your Ember app. That's the type of solutions, the types of use cases we'll talk through. In addition, because of the extensibility that's built in to XMPP, you have standards uh, such as PubSub, which have uh, come, on, come along and further uh, prescribed how to build certain types of message flows and applications, which we'll talk about a little bit more. So just a note about rosters and groups. You could imagine if you're trying to build a peer-to-peer -peer type of an app in a browser, how complex that would be, how difficult it would be to have every single client every single Ember app talking to every other Ember app in, uh, to exchange real-time information. Very difficult to imagine how, not only what that network graph would look like, but how would you actually even facilitate the delivery of that message? How would you ensure that it uh, gets delivered and only delivered to the parties that uh, are authorized or intended for that message? Uh, the complexity graph of a, of a uh, a peer-to-peer -peer model uh, grows exponentially as you start, as you see in this sort of illustration, spreading that across multiple domains and starting to federate that out uh, as your user base grows. Again, the complexity grows uh, uh, very quickly. And that's one of the reasons why we think XMPP gives us a, a tremendous leg up on this type of real-time capability to our Ember application. Did that one already? Okay, so how do you actually get XMPP into the browser? Uh, Javier mentioned that WebSockets is uh, really where we're headed. Uh, WebSockets isn't final yet, and all the browsers don't support it yet. And even the protocols that are defined, the sub-protocols that are defined within WebSockets, including an XMPP sub-protocol, really aren't quite released yet. They're not quite there yet. So in the meantime, we have a very effective technique called Bosch. Again, part of the standards body that's maintained uh, within the XMPP world. You see the, uh, uh, the specifications there. It's a very uh, long mouthful. It, we just call it Bosch. You can see what it stands for there. But it effectively is a long polling technique uh, that is uh, geared to build and optimize on what we know to be sort of the uh, optimizations of that carrier wave, the HTTP that's running underneath it. And so in these two illustrations, you see what classic polling looks like or standard polling within a web application where it's up to the client to initiate a connection to the server. The server then checks its current state and replies immediately back to the client, typically with a, mm, I don't have anything for you right now. You can imagine there's a lot of dead space uh, relative to the number of queries that you might need in order to keep a, an application anywhere near real-time current. So that's a very chatty very inefficient way to do that. Then the polling interval is maintained on the client, at which point, whatever the length of that polling interval is, the client then needs to go through and re-set up that entire handshake, uh, set up the HTTP connection, send the request. It's a very sort of heavyweight, uh, not very scalable way to deal with current data in the browser. 
So the long falling technique takes a, a slightly different approach. Still very much HTTP client to server. In fact, in the initial request, it looks very much identical to the first drawing. But the idea is that the, the uh, wait time is actually agreed upon by the client and server and is maintained on the server for some amount of time, say a minute. The server will hold that connection, typically in a non-waiting state, so it's very lightweight in terms of the server resource. And then the instant that the server has something to say back to the client, it sends it in the form of a stanza in, uh, over these streams that we talked about a moment ago. Then the client, having received that, will immediately issue a new request. The benefit of that is really twofold. Number one, there's no waiting. If there's information to be delivered, it gets delivered immediately. Number two, uh, if HTTP has been configured between that client and that server uh, with the keep alives and the infrastructure that is going to be on the network, you're very likely to reuse the pathway that had been set up on the prior request. And so it becomes a very efficient way to make for real-time delivery. It also allows for the client having, uh, if you will, uh, waiting in this sort of server wait to initiate a secondary request, effectively terminating the one that's waiting if the client has something to tell the server. So there's really no waiting on either end of that handshake, which makes it, again, very effective, very efficient uh, compared to traditional uh, client-side polling. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a standard rather than an implementation. And that gives us then the leverage that there actually are many implementations of the standard. There are many XMPP servers, as well as many clients, and as well as uh, many libraries, both client and server, that know how to deal with various parts of this protocol. Uh, it's, very highly, uh, it's very highly extensible, meaning it can be very easily customized. It's also very scalable, uh, meaning that in a combination of being able, for example, to combine the, the benefits of non-blocking I.O. with the benefits of clustering in the server, with the benefits of federating across multiple clusters, and you can get to enterprise internet scale very quickly and be able to maintain that type of scale uh, as, your, as your application, as your, as your uh, solution grows. Now the one we've been using is uh, OpenFire. OpenFire is an open source Apache licensed XMPP server. Uh, in full disclosure, I am actually one of the core committers on this open source project in GitHub, just so you know that's going on. They don't pay me for that plug, by the way. <laughs> I'm not sure what the deal is on that, but. Uh, but it does support, as I said, the non-blocking I.O., the federation, the clustering. Uh, it is very easily extensible because it, in addition to fulfilling the uh, tenets of the XMPP protocol, also has a very robust plug-in API that allows us as an engineering team to very easily extend and integrate OpenFire into our overall stack. And the effect of this is that in uh, the traditional web server, which is that is serving up our Ember application and all the data and all the CRUD and all the REST requests, this is now another channel through which we're able to deliver real-time data and push it directly to the client. Uh, this is the slide I think is the most important one in the deck because there's so many interesting things that you can do once you open up this real-time capability in your Ember application. What you want to be able to do is have your application go get the data that it needs when it needs it. That's what it does today. But when that data changes for effects that are happening outside that Ember application, you want that delivered immediately to you. You want the effect of it delivered immediately to you in order to provide the best experience for your user. So just a few thoughts on that. Uh, the first use case, presence and context. So I've already touched on what presence is. Within the group, your roster, you imagine your contact list. Um, your presence, that is to say that your uh, uh, um, existence or your, your, your current uh, activity within the app is already uh, being exchanged. That's part of the, the core protocol. Now, if on that carrier wave, if you start to put little hints of what's actually going on in that Ember application, imagine how the other Ember applications that are in that same context can then begin to collaborate. For, for example, one of the things we're exploring in our application is a follow me type feature. A doctor is working on a chart and would like to consult with another doctor in the practice. That other doctor can simply uh, see the user uh, in the app, right click and say, join me. And they're on the same chart working together. Uh, so that context can be shared through the presence in addition to am I available, am I working, 
do not disturb, I'm with a patient, those sorts of things that, that uh, can be delivered immediately. Uh, distributed events. I think this one's very interesting as well. You may not normally think of your Ember application of being able to receive events that are actually being triggered by other users in other browsers. But that's what this capability would be. Imagine being able to notify a user in, a, in an, another browser context within your shared group, in our case a practice, uh, that an interesting activity has happened and being able to update the Ember app in real time in response to that distributed event. Uh, so very compelling, interesting things there. I mentioned peer-to-peer. -peer. We can't really do peer-to-peer -peer in the browser. It just doesn't scale. But when you use this XMPP carrier wave as a way to uh, sort of govern or constrain that to deal with all the complex routing to maintain the uh, uh, present state, the delivery state, uh, again, very powerful. I put S to C on there. That's server to client. And this is where it starts to get interesting with some of the other types of abilities you can bring uh, to the table once you put data push in the mix. One of the things you'd like to do with your Ember application for its performance and to make the experience the best for your user is to be able to have the data you need in the browser all the time. Right? You don't want to go to the server if you can help it. What's the problem with that? Once you've got it on your client, it's immediately stale. As soon as you fetch it, it's effectively stale. Well, not anymore because one of the things you can do with this carrier wave is send cache and validation messages. So I've got a patient loaded. Three different doctors are looking at it in their various uh, browsers. One changes it. Wouldn't it be great to have that tell the other two, hey, the one you have is now stale? Because if you don't get that message, then the one you have is good. You don't need to go to the server anymore. And imagine how complimentary that could be with Ember Data and with the uh, ability to very aggressively cache the pieces of information that are very critical to making your own app very responsive. So we think that one's super compelling. Uh, various other kinds of uh, application optimizations, that is to say being able to use this to be able to actually get real-time feedback of what's really going on in the client app. Wouldn't that be great? I mean, we've tried uh, all kinds of other solutions for this, right? For sending different kinds of logs and, and instrumentation information to all kinds of third-party carrier. Uh, uh, services. Uh, why not just bring that right back to us? We can see how the application is performing in the browser and send that information back in real time. Many other things. And then this last one, just very briefly, uh, again, even thinking about some of where we're going with Ember and the modularity, the, the packaging, some of the things we're going to be able to do to be able to distribute code, package it up, and, and uh, resolve dependencies on the fly. Uh, one of the things we're looking at right now uh, is uh, using this same signal to be able to send uh, software updates to the client through a push in various ways. So whether you're talking about here's a, here's a reload command for a particular component, a particular module, here's, a, uh, here's an update for a feature that's actually loaded up, you don't need to wait for that client to log out or to time out or to have some sort of uh, edge cache expire. You can send that immediately to the client and the client can come uh, get the new capability. So we th we're super excited about it. I think there's a lot of uh, other interesting things we can do. This is just a screenshot of our app. Uh, this is the messaging uh, within our app. You can just see some idea of what we're doing here in terms of uh, you know, little lights that show up when you get a new message, uh, the uh, immediate drawing of messages when they're delivered from uh, others. Uh, this is effectively kind of a combination email IM within our EHR that is secure protected, private within the, uh, within the practice. So just a little bit of a sense of where we're going, what we have. I want to hand it back to uh, Javier, who is actually going to give you a demo of some of this capability. All right. Cool. Thank you, Dom. That was awesome. Now, sure, cool. So now I'm going to switch mode to mirroring so I can easily show you, um, you know, our demo. OK. So. Let's say you wanted to get started with, uh, with XMPP. The first thing that you would need is access to an XMPP server. And you can access one of the XMPP servers that are open source or openly available on the internet, or you can actually run your own. If you wanted to run your own, you can just go on Google for OpenFire download, and that'll take you to the download page for OpenFire. You can quickly set it up in your local machine, and once you actually have it up and running, you will have access to this web console in which you can log in and manage your XMPP server. 
So I'm going to log in. This is how, how the um, web console looks like. So after you log in, you have access to configure this server. For this demo, what I want to show you guys is that um, to use XMPP first, you, you need users. Now, you can have support for anonymous users or Razor users. In this case, we're going to use Razor users. I'm going to create um, two users. Call, call this one user1. Password is going to be easy. Can you guys guess it? OK, and we're going to create pass, um, user2. OK, so now I have two users in my system. Uh, another thing that you can see here in this, in this uh, console is actually you know, the sessions. There's no sessions. So our demo is an instant message application built in uh, Ember.js, of course, and uh, that allows you, these users to actually connect and send each other messages. So if you want to actually get the, um, the demo application, you can get it from GitHub. It's open source, and you can use it to get started with, with XMPP. So once you download this repo, you know, you know it's an Ember CLI application. You run an NPM install, and you, you do um, a Bower, Bower install as well. You, and um, then you actually have to run it. I have done that already here in the console, so I'm just going to run it. Once your application is running, you can actually connect, go into localhost, port 4200. OK, so what we see here is our application. Now, since uh, we're going to have two users sending each other messages and sharing presence, I'm going to open another um, tab here in which I'm going to have another session. OK. All right, so in the left, I'm going to log in as user 1. So when you're using, you're working with um, XMPB, you need to use like a full did, which is called basically the username, uh, at the domain that you're accessing. OK, and I click Connect. All right, great, I'm connected. Live demos are fine, I guess. Sometimes they work. <laughs> so um, I'm going to log in as uh, user2 on the right side. User2, close. Cool. So this, this application basically uh, gives you an Ember component that is your buddy list on the right side, right? So since these are new users, they don't have any, any friends, any buddy list. So one of the things, the first things that you can do in an XMPP application is manage your roster, your, your buddy list. So one of the options you can do here is add a user. So here in user one, I'm going to add user two, a local host. So when I click subscribe, I'm sending an XMPP message that says, I want to subscribe to this user, right? And I see it on my roster on the right side as user two, but I don't see their presence because this user hasn't really accepted me yet. So I can't really know whether they are logged in or not. I, I can't really know their presence. I can't, do, I can't know anything about them until they accept me. Now, as you guys can see on the right side, uh, user two got the request from user one. So this, now that I got a request from that user, I can see their presence because he wants to establish a connection with me. But what I can do first is either accept or deny this connection. In this time, in this example, I'm going to accept this connection. When I click accept, you guys are going to see that the other user is going to become you know, available. It's going to show green as online, and we're going to see the presence of this user. So I click accept, and you see that that happened automatically on the left side. Um, in this application right now, we're in debug mode, so we're actually seeing the raw input and output of the XML packages that are going back and forth with the server. So that's the first step. So I just, in this application, I built my roster, I added my body list, you know, so these two users are connected. That's one thing that you, you can do with sub, this application. Another thing that you can do with this demo is update your presence. That, let's say that you want to say user wants, wants to notify the body list that they're in, you know, in, in the Ember Meetup. So I'm going to say in Ember Meetup. And they send an update presence. As you can see on the other user, that got immediately updated on the right side. Very, very simple stuff. And last but not least, one of what you can do in this application is actually establish send each other messages as in a chat application. You could totally use this demo to implement an instant messaging you know, application in your Ember app, very easily integrated. So I click on the user, and then I get this chat box. I'm going to say hello. That sends a message to a server, the server sends it to the other client, and we see on the right side uh, we have a little badge with a number one. So I click in here and I get my message. Now these users have this little you know, dialogue engaged in which they can start talking. I say, hi, how are you? As you can see, this data is being transferred from one client to another client almost in, um, basically in real time. 
You know, and this data is being pushed to these clients, it's not being pulled. So that's our demo. Um, all the code is out there, it's very simple. It's no different than any of the stuff that you're already doing with, with Ember. It's just using the XMPP for, for handling this data. Any questions so far? No? Okay, so let's go back to the slides. Oh, sure. No, that's actually using an Ember Ember data um, model, no adapter, because it's just used to actually, when you receive the package, you just add this record to, to the store, and then and your DOM gets automatically updated. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go next into explaining a little bit uh, about this application. All right, so I already showed you how to set up OpenFire, how to get started. Now, um, the important parts that you wanna, you wanna know about you know, this, this app is basically, you know, first, how do you connect to, to, from your Ember application to uh, this XMPP server? For that, you can use a, a library called Strophy.js, which is basically wraps up all the connectivity that you would need to do, to do with XMPP servers, basically establishing a connection, sending a package, receiving a package, um, building a package as well, because you have to speak the XMPP protocol um, to, to send messages back and forth. So here, the last line we see, like uh, when we so we first create a new Strophy connection, right there, and then we, you know, of course, connect some things, and we basically call this function called connect, in which we pass the username, the password, and a, a function that we want to bind every time there is a change activity in the connection. So connecting to the XMPP server is really, really straightforward. Next, every time that there is a message sent. To, uh, from the server to the client, that gets, um, there's a function call that gets executed in your JavaScript. So you can pretty much do anything you want. And that's kind of like the hook that we use to connect our Ember data, our Ember models, to the messages that come from XMPP server. In this, in this case, we have basically two, two models. One of them handles the presence and the list of users, and the other one, the messages that go back and forth. So every time that a message comes in, you say, okay, what kind of message is this? You parse it properly, and then you say, you decide what you want to do with it, whether you want to you know, add it to a store, you want to ignore it, you want to update whatever part of, of, of your UI. Uh, as I already said, you know, thank you for that question. Uh, the Ember data uh, models are very simple. You don't have to use Ember data. You can use any type of Ember object to, to store your data. And to, and to connect your bindings. Uh, but they're straightforward, nothing that you have not already seen with M and Ember before. And then finally, you know, to send these messages to the server, you also use the connection that you establish with, with Strophy, that, that JavaScript object. So uh, you use, Strophy gives you a lot of helpers to building this um, XMPP packages that you need to send. Uh, and after you follow the specification, you build your package, all you have to do is this connection.send, pass the package, and the Strophy library will take care of just delivering this message to the server. Okay, uh, if you want to learn more about XMPP, the protocol and specification, this is some, some important and interesting links. Of course, xmpp.org is where your main resource to get information about the protocol. Then that's the next link is the link to the Strophy, the JavaScript library that handles all the connection. Um, there is a really nice project that's an instant messaging application built in JavaScript. It's not necessarily built in, in Ember.js, but it's a full chat, chat system. It allows you to have multi-user, multi-chat multi, multi -chat rooms, and all sort of like nice, nice things. And then if you want to download OpenFire, you have to go to ignitereal.org, projects OpenFire, and you can get you know, a copy of OpenFire. There's a very interesting book as well. It's called Professional XMPP Programming with JavaScript and jQuery. This book covers a lot of these topics and very in a lot of uh, deep, interesting uh, samples that they give you. And um, it's not really, it doesn't really use Ember.js, but uses JavaScript and jQuery. And it's very easy to port applications from that to, to, uh, to Ember. All right, cool. That's our contact information. Thank you very much. You Thank you.